as we start to learn about general chemistry, we need to lay a foundation for ourselves to build off of. And we're gonna do that in this first series of lectures by talking about matter and measurement and uh, some problem solving skills that'll help us throughout our course. So we'll start with uh, an overview of what chemistry is um, and what we'll be looking at. So first we have chemistry in general, and it's gonna be the science that seeks to understand the behavior of matter by studying the behavior of atoms and molecules. Uh, and so for a lot of us, this is the, the study of cool explosions and color changes and the formation of crystals. Um, and so in this class, we're uh, going to talk first about what matter is, and then we'll start looking at what is an atom and what are molecules and build from there. So atoms are going to be subatomic or submicroscopic particles that constitute the fundamental building blocks of just ordinary matter. Um, so free atoms that just exist out in nature as just an atom are really rare. Instead, they actually bind together and form different arrangements that we call molecules. And we'll talk about the different types of those arrangements and that form and the different types of binding that hold them together throughout this class, this quarter. So just by way of example, if we have the atoms carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, as atoms on their own, they are considered basically building blocks for lots of different types of molecules that have lots of different properties. We can combine carbon and hydrogen together to form something like methane gas. We can combine oxygen and hydrogen together to form water. And methane gas and liquid water or gaseous water have very different physical properties and act completely differently. We can combine a number of all three into small or really large molecules. Kind of a, a medium-sized one would be glucose, uh, C6H12O6. So that's six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms bonded together in a very specific pattern. And we get glucose. So we oftentimes, uh, especially as scientists, we like to classify matter um, or classify everything. And so here's some classifications of matter. If we're gonna start with atoms, all, all molecules are made up of atoms. And so really these are our, our kind of foundation of what matter is, atoms, and then from atoms we can build molecules. And together these make up all matter. And, and matter is anything that's going to take up volume and have mass. And of all of that matter that exists out in the world, we have um, two kind of categories we could split them up into, substances and mixtures. Now, a substance is going to be something that we think of as being pure. It is only one thing. And if we think about this for atoms, just one atom and a lot of it together as a substance would be an element. And so our example here is the element gold. And we would have, uh, for a piece of gold, a whole bunch of gold atoms and nothing else. But if, if we think about it, a molecule as a substance, we have just one molecule and that's it, we can come up with a, a pure substance for that molecule rather than an atom. And that would be a compound. A compound will include um, both ionic compound, both like ionic molecules that are held together by ionic bonds and covalently bonded molecules. And I, I've got a couple examples here. So if I have just water and it's pure water, which is actually really hard to find, um, I would have only water molecules in that glass and that would make it a pure compound. And if I had a salt shaker of sodium chloride, which is table salt, and it was just sodium chloride bonded together ionically, I would have the sodium chloride compound. And so these can be mixtures of atoms into molecules, but pure groupings of just that molecule will make up a substance. Now on the other side, we have mixtures, um, and those are going to be a combination of different types of atoms or molecules. And we've got two subclassifications that we consider when we think about mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Now homogeneous 
mixtures are going to be uniform. That means the different particles that make it up, if it's different atoms or different molecules, will be evenly distributed throughout the substance. And so here I am showing a, a metal alloy that has gold particles, but then another atom that is um, uh, consistently spread out through the gold atoms. And you wouldn't be able to look at the substance and say, oh, well, there's the gold piece and there's the iron piece or the silver piece that is making the mixture. A heterogeneous mixture, you can usually visually see the difference between the two or they're in different physical states. So the example we have here for a heterogeneous mixture is like panning for gold. There's a mixture of water and there's a mixture of gold, which is AU, in this pan right here. And they're forming a heterogeneous mixture that has two different phases. We have liquid water and solid gold mixed together. Um, and we could probably see the flux of gold and see the difference between that and the water. Matter also comes in a number of physical states. Um, and so we may see water, or sorry, matter exist as a solid in which case it would have a very specific definite volume and a shape that would be unique to it. And it would maintain that shape no matter where you put it. And so in our solid matter, the atoms or the molecules will be very close together and they'll stay in the same relative positions to one another, which means that those atoms or molecules will not be moving very much. Next, we have liquid matter. Um, and so we can have the exact same atoms or the exact same molecules. And if they move more, they will be able to have a definite volume, but not a definite shape. It'll take on the shape of the container because these particles will be moving around and moving around. And if we go to the gaseous state of matter, then we have particles that are moving even faster and they won't have a definite shape or a definite volume. They'll just expand to take up whatever space you allow them. They'll occupy the entire container they're in. And those particles are really far apart from one another and they're interacting a lot less. And so these are our three main states of matter that we might observe um, a substance being, I guess. So if matter is anything that takes up space and has mass, then is everything matter? Uh, is there anything you can think of that doesn't fit that description, that doesn't take up space and doesn't take up mass? Well, if you think about things like radiation or radio waves or heat that you can feel and it affects you, but you can't weigh it and you, you don't see the space it takes up or light, then there is this whole other side to our universe. And our universe is really made up of matter plus energy. And energy is the capacity to do work. Um, it can't be created, it can't be destroyed. Um, and, and what work is, is really just the um, ability to exert force over an area. So th the image that always comes to mind for me is like pushing a box across a floor. That's me exerting work or moving something with energy. Um, and that, that affects the behavior of matter. Um, in general, total energy uh, for a universe or for a system is uh, potential energy and kinetic energy. And if you are taking physics or have taken physics, you'll probably see examples of this of uh, bowling balls dropping from heights for potential energy. Kinetic energy, the roller coaster example is fantastic. But in chemistry, we are thinking about molecules and atoms. And so in this class, when we talk about potential energy, and it's the same thing, it's, it's stored energy um, or potential energy, we think about the energy that is stored in chemical bonds. We sometimes call it chemical energy, but it's really just potential energy. And it's how much energy could be released um, or was put into forming that bond or was released when that bond was formed or would be required to break that bond. Uh, so our example here, we have water, um, which uh, each bond between an oxygen and a hydrogen represents about 500 kilojoules for every mole of water 
Um, and that that's energy that we would have to put into separating those atoms. Um, and when they came together, that was energy that was released. Now, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Um, and so with atoms and molecules, they, they are constantly in motion. And they have translational motion where they move across um, space. They have vibrational rotation where our bonds vibrate in a lot of different ways. And there's rotational, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to like, usually in a lecture, I'm standing up and I spin around. But so there's rotational energy, which is how the molecule spins around in space. Rather than vibrating, which you can like go back and forth, it can go this way and that way. Um, and so all of those types of motion that a molecule or an atom can do would represent its kinetic energy. 